we're sisters like Angel and Ali, where we are highlighting individuals making a difference in their communities. My name is Ali Cat Castle, and as you all know, I am the co-host for Sisters Like Angel and Ali. I'm also a co-host for Girls Like Us, a transgender talk show, and I have a YouTube channel, Ali Cat Castle. There you go. Back to you, Angel. And I am Angel Kinan. I'm a registered nurse. I'm an actress, and I'm, of course, the sister of Ali, and I'm also a co-host of Girls Like Us. And speaking of Girls Like Us, I'm so excited because we have another co-host of Girls Like Us here with us today, Miss Millie Catrilli, which is recognized by the 39th District Congressman in California recently this year. And if I could also add the great thing about Miss Millie is that she's also a very stellar makeup artist. Oh my gosh, I learned so much from her. She's also a healthcare administrator for the LGBTQ community. And she's also a trans activist. You know, that's the reason why she got all the awards because she does so much for the community without expecting anything in return. A social media influencer. And of course, like what we said, a co-host for Girls Like Us. No other than Miss Miljana Sain. Hi, everyone. Hi. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, it's such an honor to be here. Thank you, sisters. I miss you so much, but I'm so excited to get back into production. Can I love them? your hair and your outfit. <laughs> Thank you. Just a little something. Like, I just I was like, let me dress up for the girls. A Sunday fun day. <laughs> so, Miss Milky, can you please tell us a little bit, a little background about yourself? Yeah, so I'm Miliana Singh. I also go by Lana Patel on social media. I am Afro Indo Caribbean, um, first generation American from immigrant parents. And I started my transition when I was 17 years old in Florida, um, where I kind of learned a lot of my know hows now and how to navigate transition because of the hardships that I faced back in the South. Um, and so I started my transition at 17 back in 2006. I recently turned 31. I'm a Libra. And yeah, I just, this has been an amazing ride. I mean, I've been in California now for four years and I've been with the show for two years now. Like August makes two years. I've been a girl, one of the girls like us, host. Um, but yeah, it's been a dream come true. And I'm so honored to be able to be here on this platform and to live in this space and to be who I am and to have representation. And I mean, can we talk about the good news that just recently happened? Or like, yes, of course. Of <laughs> Our first president elect is Afro Jamaican and Indian, like myself. So I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, it's it's such an honor, and I'm so excited, and it just gives me so much hope for the future. Um, yeah, and so that's a little bit about me. <laughs> Congratulations, Kamala Harris. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Hopefully, I'll be getting coming. Yes, hopefully I'm getting a little bit, a few more of these. So my dream is to like meet uh, Senator, now Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. Um, but this is from the Congressman who was part of the House of Representatives, um, Gil Cincinnaros. I want to get one from Vice President. So uh, <laughs> cross fingers, I'm going to put that out to you. Cross, me too. <laughs> As we promised our viewers, it's Transgender Awareness Month, and we're highlighting all the amazing trans uh, gender men and women who have made a difference in our community. So, could you, if you could just uh, give us like a little uh, uh, background, when did you know that you were a transgender woman when you were younger? Yeah. How did that? So, yeah, I think I always knew, um, and I think for me, because I was very androgynous looking as a child. I was always very small. Like when they did size order growing up, I was always within the first three, like shortest people when they lined us up. Um, I was always very petite, very small, and I had an androgynous look. So I always passed for a girl. Um, and my parents would have to tell my family, no, this is a boy. But for me, that was really affirming. I cannot tell you at a certain age when I knew uh, something was different. But I never had a feeling of being male or being a boy. But I remember having a conversation with my aunt when I was 18. I was a year into transition. 
And she said, do you remember when we were younger, you were three years old, I was eight, she was eight at the time. And she said, uh, we were playing house and you told me you were a girl. And so I think that always stayed with her. And I, I was like, oh my gosh, at three years old, I knew I was a girl. Um, and then growing up, I probably was around five when it, I realized I like playing with the girls, but it's not, um, my family just weren't, was not accepting of me playing with girls, like playing with dolls and doing girl things. They wanted me to play with the boys and rough and tumble and like sports. And that was never anything I liked. I always gravitated towards like feminine things. So yeah, I, I want to say like three, I guess, was when I audibly told someone I was trans. And then I told my family when I was 12 that I was uh, one, gay, but then also trans. But I thought gay was easier to work with because I didn't know how to do the transition part, but I knew I could at least be out and open about my attraction to men. Was the culture part of that hardship? Like in terms of the Indian community, was it hard for your, um, like that side of the family? Yeah, it was really tough. So my parents are both mixed. Um, my mom is Jamaican and Punjabi, so from North India. And my dad is Gujarati and Trinidadian. So um, Gujarat is Northwest. Um, and it was definitely tough. And for my parents, they were raised um, in the Caribbean. And so, you know, my, my father was probably a about a teenager when he came to this country mm -hmm. and uh, late teen. So for him, he had so much of that machismo, that toxic masculinity, um, misogyny, homophobia that is so rampant in the island um, that he kind of brought that with him here. And then my mother, she only knew what she was taught and another culture, um, you know, Jamaican culture, dance hall culture, homophobia is very widely accepted. And even within the pop culture, the, even the music, like the pop music there, dance hall music, they speak um, explicitly about harming and, and taking the lives of people in the LGBT community. So I always grew up with that fear because we would play the music and you would dance to it, but then if you sat and like listened to the words, you're like, wait, this is not okay. Like this is wrong. Mm -hmm. But so many people had that ideology and then you listen to the music and your favorite pop artist is telling you how you should set people on fire or you should stomp them out or you should do these things. So for me, it was just like, there's no way I'm going to be able to one, come out and tell them. And so that the coming out process was really hard for me because I, I feared being ostracized. I feared my life. I, you know, honor killings are very common in the Caribbean. And so I felt like, I mean, I could potentially lose my life because of this. And if I had been born and raised in the Caribbean, I probably wouldn't be here. Um, so that was something I thought about. And I just felt like they were never gonna come around and accept it. And so it was quite a journey. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I was kind of at war with my family for a long time. Um, my dad and I haven't seen each other, my biological father, I haven't seen him since I was 13. And he decided to step away from my life at that time because he felt like, I guess I was a disappointment to him um, as a son because I was the first born and I was born male. And he felt like my son is not going to be feminine or this, like, I don't want a gay son, I don't want a trans son. Um, and so he made that decision and we haven't seen each other since I was 13 years old. Um, but we spoke about two, three years ago now. Um, he has accepted me as a woman and uh, embraced it, but we haven't seen each other. and We don't really have much of a relationship. Um, that's but- That's a good part, that's a good step. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, uh, my mom, she came around, she came around, it'll be three years in December, this is December. And funny enough, she found out, well, she came around through 
uh, Instagram. Mm -hmm. So she knew I was trans, but I mean, we were at war for so long. Um, I didn't even talk to my mom and my stepdad first at one point because they shaved my head bald. They shaved off all my hair and forced me to go back to being a boy. Um, I had to take hormones in secrecy. I lived a double life. So I cut them off. But my mom and I always had a very strange relationship because she was 18 when she had me. She was a young mom. She wasn't ready to be a mother. And then you have this feminine child. And then I come out as gay. And then I'm trans. And I think for her, it was just a bit much. Um, and it was a lot of unlearning for her to do. So it was through Instagram. One night, she woke up. I, I still remember. Um, I think it was right around New Year's. And at midnight, my WhatsApp is going off. My mom is like sending me all these messages. I'm like, oh my gosh, what's wrong? My mom's in New York. I'm in California. So it's three o'clock her time. And she's like, I got up in the middle of the night to use the restroom. And I got on um, Instagram. And your uh, post was the first thing that came up. And so she looked at the post. And I think it was around the time I was working with one of the makeup brands. Um, and then she started going through my different posts and reading them. And she was reading my story and, and my journey. And it was the first time she recognized all the hurt and the pain and, and the trauma that I'd been through and how hard I had to fight to be the woman that I am today. And I think that was that moment where it really clicked for her. And she like hysterically was crying and she just felt so remorseful for um, not being the mother that she could have been all those years and for not accepting me. And so that's kind of when we made the path to work on our relationship, to build our bond as mother and daughter. And um, that's when she fully accepted me, so. Wow. Well, you know, yeah. well, I'm, I'm very happy that, you know what, you are speaking now to your mom and then that you've spoken to your dad. So I believe that you're already in that stage where everything is coming full circle. So yeah. um, have, you, have you seen your mom since then, since um, you communicating with her towards social media? Yeah, so the um, last time I saw my mother was, was it last spring? How was I think it was for her birthday last spring, but I'm planning to go see her for Christmas. So I'll be in New oh, York, I'll be a snow bunny. <laughs> So if you can tell us, so when did you move to California, to Los Angeles? Yeah, so I moved in uh, December. Actually, it was a week before Christmas, December 18th, um, 2006. And um, so you mentioned I, that there was like, um, that it was really hard down south. What's the biggest differences in living in California and living in Florida? as being trans or openly trans? Yeah, so in Florida, I was not openly trans. Um, I didn't come out until 2017, like openly. So I lived in stealth as much as I could. Um, I had to transition. So of course, people knew me from high school, uh, college, and then working, doing a transition on the job, on campus. One, Florida does not have uh, healthcare protections. They don't have, um, at the time there was no employment protection. There wasn't anything in place for trans people. So it was very tough. I had to self-medicate, um, the first four years of my transition. So I took hormones off of the black market. I was my own doctor. I figured out my dosages and I made a regimen based off of what I saw online on other women. Um, because I went to three different doctors, all of them turned me down and said, no, I'm not giving you hormones. The last one said, um, I prescribe female hormones to my uh, cis female patients who have menopause or hormone replacement therapy issues. Um, I'm, I don't feel comfortable giving female hormones to a 16 year old boy. So she suggested I go to Tampa or Miami where they do that there. Mm -hmm. And she didn't give me any resources, a doctor, a place to potentially go. At 16 years old, I didn't have a driver's license or a car to be able to jump and drive five hours south to go explore Miami to find out where I could find hormones. So I had to take uh, matters into my own hands and I, you know, I found black market hormones and that's how I started my transition. Um, and then, you know, there's a lot of discrimination on campus, um, going to school, being laughed at and picked on. Um, I had a teacher misgender me. 
I remember one of the counselors telling me to not even go through the transition because they're not ready for that. You know, where I was in Polk County, Polk County is the largest county in Florida, but it's the most conservative and it's always red. Uh, and I'm sure that's probably why it's part of the swing state. But um, she told me basically, where are you going to use the restroom? If you go to the boys' room, they're going to beat you up. If you go to the girls' room, they're going to run out screaming. So for the first year and a half, I would not use the restroom on campus. I would hold it as much as I can. If I found a family restroom outside. Well, now that you campus, go to women's restroom here, do they run out? They don't. No. Exactly. So, um, and, so really, so I want to um, ask, was that the reason why you moved to California? Because of all these challenges that you've been facing through in Florida? Um, at that time, you know, I think I'd been 10 years into transition. So I'd come a long way. And I also moved out of Polk County for, yeah, I was working in Orlando. Um, the Pulse night shooting just happened in June uh, of that same year that I moved. So it was just a lot of turmoil. I also broke off an engagement with my fiance at that time. And I just needed a change. Uh, we also elected our 45th president. Um, it just was a lot. And, and I felt like, okay, I'm in the South. I still don't have protection for employment, for healthcare. I'm paying out of pocket for my hormones, for my surgeries, everything. Uh, there's no type of protection. I was working for Mac Cosmetics, thankfully, who uh, is based out of Canada and New York. But if I was to ever get a job outside of that, you know, and now we have the 45th in office. I was like, it's probably time to go. And I also felt like um, I just needed to leave. And I just visited California for the first time, fell in love with it. For, I went for five days and I was crying on the plane ride home. I just felt so connected to this place. And I knew I was gonna move here. So I told myself I would move by January of that year. So I flew back in October. Right before Ma uh, Hurricane Matthew hit, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm flying into a hurricane. But uh, I told my roommate, I, I want to move to Flor uh, California. And my roommate, um, who I've been friends with for 10 years, said, let's do it. And that's kind of how it happened. So in October, I came back to Florida. I was training to be a regional uh, a resident trainer for MAC Cosmetics. And I told my resident trainer what I decided. And I told my, the staff my managers, and December, I think December 5th was my last day at work. It was sad to leave, but um, I knew I had to make that transition and California was just calling me. So I packed everything up into a, I think a Penske truck and my Prius, and then I drove cross country for three days and been here ever since. Wow, and now you're making waves in California, getting recognition from the congressman, doing your own all trans talk show, um, being a media influencer, and you're still a makeup artist, and, um, and you're very active in the LGBTQ community. Tell us what you do for the LGBT community here. Yeah, so I do advocacy and activism. I also work in healthcare administration. And so for me, that is a passion uh, project that feels into a career move because, you know, like I said, I experienced so much discrimination in Florida and, uh, you know, the inability to access proper care. So I felt like I want to take the knowledge that I have and the passion and fuel that into a career where I can help other people and so that other people don't have to turn to the black market for hormones or for things like silicone injections, um, that they're not self-medicating, um, so that they have the ability to have fair access, like everyone should, you know? And I think that healthcare is a human right. Um, trans care, LGBT care is a human right. So that's, you know, that led me to do the work that I do. So um, was that the reason why you went into healthcare or what what you decided to or, or or please tell us if correct me if i'm wrong um so aside from being a makeup artist you also decided to just be in healthcare as well and just do them together or did you kind of like did makeup artistry part-time and then went to 
healthcare full time. So if you could just give us like a clear picture, like from being a makeup artist to healthcare as well. Yeah. So makeup was always something I loved. I fell in love with makeup in 2007. MAC Cosmetics was my dream job. And I worked so hard to get into MAC. And I finally got in after applying four years, nonstop, back to back. I finally got in 2012. In 2014, I got a part-time position. A year later, I was full-time. And then I was working on being a resident trainer. Uh, but when I made the move to come to California, the way that MAC work is, is a little different. So in order to get another position, you have to resign or you have to apply for another position, get that position, and then you can resign. So when I resigned, I left Florida without job security. So when I moved to California, I didn't have a job. Uh, I was moving over to freelance, but everything was kind of up in the air. So initially I actually started um, working in corporate America. I was in technology that was paying the bills and I was doing Mac on the side. I was freelancing and I was trying to get a position to work as a manager. Um, however, the politics of the company, it just wasn't working out because a lot of the times they, they hire people that they know. And since I'm new to California, they didn't know me. So I was getting passed up for opportunities um, regardless of my tenure with the company. So I started volunteering with the LGBT community um, and I knew that I wanted to give back. And so when I got involved was when I got my full-time job in tech. And once I got that job, I knew that I could give back to others because I needed a solid foundation. I knew that I couldn't pour from an empty cup. So that's kind of how it started. So I started volunteering and a year later the position opened up and I stepped into the role. Wow. And, um, and, and of course, you know, you, you've been, you've taught us so much, you know, like the, you've given so much to the trans community. So how did it happen when uh, Carolina met you and then suddenly, of course, you became our sister or as our co-host for Girls Like Us. Can you please yes. tell us about that story? Yeah, so um, Carolina and I met uh, at Long Beach Pride, uh, 2017. So May 2017, uh, we met and we just started talking and I don't even know how we got onto the, the topic of Florida, but she's like, oh my gosh, you're from Florida? I'm from Florida. And she's like, oh, I'm from Tampa. And I'm like, oh, I'm from Orlando. And we have a mutual friend in common. And we were like, oh my gosh, do you know her? I know her. And so it was just really cool. Like, you know, we had a friend in common. We were both from California. We were both Florida girls over in um, California. And we're both trans. And so we exchanged information. And we just stayed in touch. And, we, you know, we uh, connect here and there. Um, and at that time, I think she was like Miss Quest. So she had the crown and she was, you know, she looked so regal. So she is I also, beautiful. So. Oh, Carolina is <laughs> like you, you are very beautiful too. I guess people from Florida are very beautiful. We all are very beautiful. Girls like us are beautiful, period. <laughs> so anyway, if you could please continue the story. So um, yeah, so basically yeah. how did she tell you about girls like us and yeah, how did she so, choose to girls like us? Yeah, so um I signed up for sexual casting as a background uh, actor, I think January, February of that year. And I was on set um, for, unfortunately, our scene never came out, but um, I think I can talk about it now because it's already out. So I, I was on set for Goliath and I was filming a scene um, and I was supposed to have two different call times and everything. It was totally like, you know, so Carolina and I had two different call times. Somehow I was changing. I was with the wardrobe um, staff and they were picking out my look because we were shooting in a club. Um, and then I see Carolina come out and she's like looking at her wardrobe. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you're here? Like what, you're on set? Like, are you filming this too? And she was like, oh my gosh. And we were like peanut butter and jelly. We did not leave each other's side. The whole day we just talked and it was amazing. We just bonded, you know? It was just so incredible. And so 
after that, we just were inseparable. And um, I think I had a surgery uh, the end of that month. I think we filmed in August. So I had a surgery in August. And then she had a surgery coming up. And then we were just talking about, um, you know, the procedure and the recovery and all that stuff. And before I knew it, we just like really took to each other. And we were talking like all the time. So I saw the show when it first came out and I was like, oh my gosh, I love this show. It's so incredible. And I used to daydream about potentially being on. And I was like, I would love to be on this show. Well, it, it so happened, right? I think what was it the next summer, Carolina had the movie premiere and we all came together. Um, and then she told me at that time that there was interest about having me on the show. And that's the first time I got to meet you, Angel. And I got to meet Kayla and Kim and Lenny. And it just was incredible. So I kind of, I think that's kind of how it started. So I saw the show, I fell in love with the show. Carolina, um, you know, asked if I'd be interested in, in joining. And, and then I got the blessing from, you know, the co-host and I got the blessing from Lenny and Kim. And in August, I found myself on set and filming. Yes, and on the first episode, we grilled you with a bunch of questions too. <laughs> yeah, I loved it. It was, it was amazing. It was such so basically, a yeah. Well, we're so happy to have you, of course, and girls like us that we're, you know, we're also so blessed to have you there, you know, because of like your beautiful story and you being a beautiful woman that you are. And um, you know what? And it's Transgender Awareness Month. And guess what? Our show, Girls Like Us, is making a comeback. Can you just please invite our viewers and tell them a little bit about our show, Girls Like Us, and why we're going back and uh, doing the show? Yeah, the show is needed. It's necessary, right? Girls Like Us is so important. Now with this being trans, uh, Transgender Awareness Month, uh, Transgender Awareness Week is coming up, and we have Trans Day of Remembrance, which is a little bit more solemn. But that space is so needed and so necessary because we, are make, we have been making waves in the community. We have Janet Mock, who has a three-year Netflix deal, right? She's executive uh, writer for Pose, and she did Hollywood, and she's doing such an incredible job out in Hollywood. Um, and we just elected a, a, the trans, our very first trans um, senator. Senator, right? I'm like, oh my god. Delaware, gosh. Sarah McBride. Yes, like so. There's there's work happening, right? So we need to excel. We need to celebrate trans euphoria, and that's a term that I recently uh, learned. But let's live in that beauty and the euphoria of being not just acknowledging us when we've fallen but also give us our flowers while we're still living so i think that's why the show is so important we need to have space for trans women to be able to come together to um celebrate each other to speak on topics right like reported this 1.5 million trans people in this country and that's just reported i'm sure there's millions more that are not being reported and they they need us almost in a way. Like they, they looked forward to our show. I have fans and viewers that reach out to me that are like, when are you coming back? You know, they, they miss the show so much. And I and miss, miss each other so much. Yes, I miss <laughs> you all. So to all of you, just so you know, Girls Like Us is an all transgender talk show. And it's hosted by, of course, Miss Kayla Ward, Miss Carolina Gutierrez, of course, um, Miss Meliana Singh, and of course, my real lifetime sibling, Angel Kanan, and yours truly, Alicat Castle. And we're here to basically, or we're, here, we're there for girls like us to basically um, uh, cater to, just to tell you our stories, the hardships, the triumphs, and how the transgender community as well can give so much to the society at the same time and i hope that you can also support us we actually have like our instagram page girls like us as well as our youtube page and please drop us questions as well or topics that you'd like us for to discuss and all of us get to tell you our points of view or our takeaway from the topic that you actually would like us to discuss so it's for all of you so in this time of change in this time of pandemic it's so timely that we're that we are making a comeback girls like us so, uh, so thank you so much, Millie. So, Millie, I want to ask you as well. If you have 
um, any advice to anyone who is in transition, but, um, but their parents are kind of like, but it's a bit hard for their parents and who also came from like a biracial family, what can you advise them? I advise, uh, find community. I, you know, I wish social media was a thing back when I started. I started in the age of dial-up. I mean, we had net zero, I think, and AOL. Um, but now we have cell phones, right? We have access to media, social media. We have access to so much more. You don't have to sit on the computer for 10 minutes to get it to connect to the internet. Um, so the world's at our fingertips. So find community. And even now in the midst of a pandemic, you can still connect with so many people. And I think that's the beautiful thing about social media is the fact that you can find that community there. And we found each other, right? And, and the beautiful thing about social media and technology is that we're still holding space. We're still gonna continue with our show and we can still be there for each other. So I say find that community, find allies, um, people who can support you during this time and find literature that's gonna help, right? Uh, not only you and, and navigating that transition and the beginning, but also stuff that you can share with your family when the time comes, if you feel comfortable to come out to them. And I also advise strategize a plan speak with someone who you can trust who can give you a plan b if things go awry if you need to leave um and you need that extra support oh that's so beautiful thank you so much for sharing your story and and everything um for being you you are amazing um the alarm already went off earlier so we actually are running out of time but i want to ask you three quick tips one for beauty one for health and one for self-care okay self-care um take some time out for yourself and if that even means just like turning off all of the media, I mean, we love social media, but sometimes it could be a bit much, especially during this election, it was a bit much for myself. So I had to like limit the time I was on. But if you need to just mute everything, take some time to be with yourself and be still and be silent. Um, so self-care, beauty, and what was the other one? Health. 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 Uh, stay on top of your health, right? Have your routine checkups. Um, and know yourself, know your body. If anything feels wrong, please feel free to call your doctor, schedule a telephone appointment if you can, and just stay on top of your health. Um, and take your vitamins and take your hormones if you're trans. Um, stay on top of those, th those things and, and drink plenty of water. Beauty, water, <laughs> water, water is your best friend um don't sleep in your makeup and invest in good skincare i think that goes a long way skincare is so important and and just be happy i think that radiates beauty more than anything when you are just content with yourself and you're happy oh anything you want to promote and last words to our audience yeah um see what's coming up girls like us Girls Like Us, yes, Girls Like Us, stay tuned for Girls Like Us. Um, there's some projects in the working, but I think when they come out, um, or when I have leeway to the green light to, to announce, I will. Um, so, but can they follow like us. so they can find out what projects you have. Yeah, so if you want to stay tuned to see what I have going on, uh, you can follow me on Instagram. It's Lana Patel, uh, XOXO, so L-A-M-A. Uh, space P A T E L. Just look up Lana Patel. You generally find me, but there's more Lana Patels coming out. Um, but yeah, if you Google Lana Patel or look up Lana Patel XOXO, Lana Patel Beauty, you can find me there. Nice. Ali? Well, thank you so much, Millie, our co host for Girls Like Us. Again, don't forget. Again, please uh, support me on my YouTube channel, Ali Cat Castle where I do like self-development and lately I'm going to be doing unboxing and, um, and things like that. So thank you so much to all of you. And again, please don't forget to subscribe and please don't forget to comment down in the section below whatever you'd like us to discuss. 
And thank you so much. And we love you all. Yes. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching. If you haven't seen Starlit Diner, Miss Lana Patel is also one of our special guest stars on the season finale of that. Um, and she also guested on our live stream with the Starlit Diner cast. And again, please like, subscribe, comment, and share um, sisters like Angel and Ali YouTube channel to everybody. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Lana. Thank you, Ali. And Thank you. Bye. I love you. Bye. Bye.